Okay, guys, uh, it's right around 11, 11 p.m. on today's Wednesday, January 24th. My voice is still really crackly because there's a lot of craziness in my environment in terms of smoke, excessive heat, no heat, uh, some type of remote stun gun use when I'm lying on my bed or trying to use the toilet that's really affecting my ability to speak. But what I need to say is very important because not everybody understands where I'm coming from. So in case there's some kind of misinterpretation out there, I'm going to say this. I am a career research scientist with a Bachelor of Science degree in Biomedical Sciences pre-med concentration and 18 years of continuous scientific career research experience at the master's level. I have worked all over Boston in all kinds of companies and all kinds of companies, workplace settings, uh, different uh, types of work environments and with many, many different multi-ethnic teams of coworkers. I do not and cannot possibly have any problem with anybody's skin color because it is about as relevant as the color of someone's shoes or their hair color or what, you know, what kind of car they drive. In fact, skin color is even less relevant than any of those things because you don't have a choice in what your skin color is unless you do a lot of tanning or unless you bleach your skin or whatever. I mean, God bless Michael Jackson. He was a beautiful black man for many years and then he kind of went lighter and I finally understood what he had to deal with when, when he revealed after he died, obviously, that he had vitiligo. So, you know, God bless Michael Jackson, but whatever. Skin color is irrelevant, okay? Um, and I've worked with many multi-ethnic groups of coworkers and never had an issue with anyone's skin color because that has nothing to do with anything. Genetically speaking, skin color has nothing to do with anything at all. It has no, no predict. Sorry, it is not a predictor of anything. It doesn't predict your IQ. It doesn't predict your talent. It doesn't predict your motivation. It doesn't predict your personality. It doesn't predict your ability to be nice to people or to be mean to people. So when I say I have a problem with some of the people in this building complex, I do not have a problem with their skin color. I have a problem with their behavior. And it all comes down to people's behavior and what they're rap she is when it comes to their functionality in society. It just so happens that I live in a building complex that is largely minority, but the behavioral aspect of it um, is, is completely separate from anyone's skin color. There are creeps of all shapes, colors, sizes, ethnicities, nationalities, and, you know, and some of the biggest creeps are, are guys like Harvey Weinstein. Um, so I'm not pointing the finger at any ethnic group, at any skin color, at any religion, nationality, etc. I actually have a multi-ethnic family. I have dated multi-ethnic people. Um, I've never had a problem, you know, with any kind of friendship, connection, coworker um, relationship with anyone at all. In fact, some of my closest friends have been of other skin colors and other nationalities and other ethnicities. And when I was growing up, I idolized people like Oprah Winfrey, like Michael Jackson, like Eddie Murphy, like Bill Cosby, like Michael Jordan. These were all great African-American superstars of the 80s, and nobody questioned their skin color, certainly not me. I was growing up and admiring these people just like everyone else. And then we had the 90s, and there were even more superstars in the 90s. Janet Jackson, um, you know, On Vogue was one of my very favorite um, groups in the 90s. And, you know, on and on. I mean, I, I could just keep naming names. Right now, one of my very favorite people is Senator Tim Scott. I love Tim Scott. I think he's an incredibly intelligent man, very well spoken, extremely polished, um, a sophisticated man. You know, I kind of hope he gets picked as someone's running mate, but, you know, skin color is irrelevant. That's all I'm saying. So, um, yeah, that just needs to be said. And uh, my last official boyfriend was actually half Peruvian and half black. So 
you do the math on that one. My issue is not with skin color. It never has been. And I have no issue with anyone's skin color. It's with behavior. So, you know, if you think that I have a problem with your skin color, why don't you check your behavior first and try to figure out how your behavior makes you come off to people who don't know you. Okay, just take a look at your behavior, all right? Because usually that's what people have a problem with. Most days, most people these days are way past skin color. I think we reached the point of going past skin color back in the probably late 70s, early 80s, maybe even the early 70s, because when you look at the music scene of the 70s, it was all about black people, right? I mean, Diana Ross and all of these, you know, beautiful uh, black musicians of the 70s. I mean, all of the whole R&B uh, scene was huge in the 70s. Nobody really cared what anybody's skin color was. Stevie Wonder was blind and he was black and nobody cared because he had such great music. He was a superstar in the 70s. People couldn't care less if he was blind or black or whatever. Nobody cares now. Stevie Wonder is just an amazing musician and a really great human being. So again, do I have a problem with anyone's skin color? Of course not. I actually worked for Barack Obama's re-election campaign in 2012, and I worked for his campaign for months, not just a few weeks, but months. I truly believed in Barack Obama, and I worked very hard to get him re-elected. So there you go. Case closed. End of story.